Hi everyone, welcome to Pilates for Pelvic Floor. I'm Smriti and today's class has a focus of health of your pelvic floor. Your pelvic floor plays an important role in everyday movement and activities like walking, lifting, pushing and pulling, and supporting your organs, your abdominals, your spine, just to name a few. They also maintain our bladder and bowel control and play an important role in sexual sensation and function. Your pelvic floor is made up of muscle groups located at the floor of the pelvis and stretch out like a hammock from the pubic bone in the front to the back towards the tailbone and side to side. As we age and go through big changes in our body such as pregnancies, childbirth, or injuries, it can impact the health of our pelvic floor. So exercises to heal our pelvic floor or keep them healthy is vital for our overall health. I think we can all agree that we all want healthy and happy pelvic floor muscles so we can live our life with ease and joy. So let's get started. Let's start laying down on the ground. So come on over, turn around to face the front of the mat with your knees bent, feet flat, sit up tall, relax the shoulder blades down your back, reach the arms forward or rest them on the sides of your legs and roll the spine down bone by bone, lengthening down and the head rests on the mat. Rest your hands by your side, find yourself on the mat, close your eyes for a moment as you take a deep breath in and full breath out, relaxing the face, the jawline and the shoulders, full breath in. Feeling the ribs stretch all directions, so 360. And as you exhale, letting go of any tension and just be here now, be present. Let go of your to-do list for now. You're right where you're meant to be right now. So let's take this time to take care of you as you breathe in, the pelvic floor naturally descends. And as you exhale, the pelvic floor returns. It rebounds and naturally relaxes and returns to its resting stage. So this is not something you have to think about too much. It just happens naturally, right? So I just wanted to give you that information, what's happening with the muscles as you breathe in and out. Breathing is such an important part of the health of our pelvic floor muscle. That's why we focus so much on breathing with our Pilates. It's all connected, right? So just breathing in and out at your natural rhythm and then open your eyes going into a pelvic tilt. So from here, before we get started, I want you to imagine your pelvis is a big bowl and the top of the bowl is where your ASIS or your bone in front of your pelvis is. So it's side by side in the front, near by the hips, and then your pubic bone is the other side of that top of the bowl, and then your belly button. And the bottom of the bowl is the sacrum. So that's the part that's touching, it's curved, it's on the ground. And we're gonna take a time to find nice, open shoulders, relax. Pelvis in a neutral position where that top of the bowl is parallel to the ground. And from here, we're gonna stretch the low back and tilt the pelvis towards the abdomen and then bring it up towards the ceiling. So it comes up and then tilt it towards your feet. So as you tilt towards your feet, that pelvis, you inhale and as you exhale, tilt the pelvis towards the shoulders. Inhale, tilt the pelvis towards your feet and you might notice a change in your shoulders, right? and then exhale as you tilt the pelvis towards your stomach. These movements are so small, but they're so important for your health. And then bring it back towards your stomach or towards your shoulders and towards the feet. So we're mobilizing the areas that support the pelvic floor and the pelvic floor naturally engages, contracts and releases as we move towards the feet and then towards the shoulders. And now just bring it back into that neutral space. So that's where the pelvis is naturally there. And there's a little curve on your lower back, between your lower back and the mat. Now we're gonna go on to right and left. So if you need to bring your hands a little bit out to the side, you can keep your collarbone wide and open from here. 
tilt the pelvis towards your left. So whichever way it is towards you, tilt towards one side, like you're tipping that bowl over to the side. So imagine it's filled with soap and you're slightly tilting the soup towards one side of the bowl and tilt it towards the other side. So I'm going to my right. You can go to your right and center. And sometimes we just have to kind of think about it, right? Because it's not something we do naturally tilt our pelvis like this side to side. And notice how that connects all the way through your ribs, through your scapula, and it's all connected. And that's why we focus on movement, not just in one part of the body, but the other because the health of your pelvic floor, your pelvis is also related to the ribs, to the spine. So going side to side, nothing fancy, but sometimes we just have to think. And these movements naturally engage the pelvic floor because it's working on that supporting the movement, stabilizing side to side. Let's go one more each way, right and left, or left and right, whatever you're at right now and center yourself. Awesome job. Let's go ahead and bring the, actually let's keep our legs hip distance apart, going into our knee spread. The right leg will open up towards the side as you keep the pelvis still. So go as far as you can while maintaining that pelvis still, the leg moves in the hip socket and bring it in. Now go to the other side, so going towards your left, bring that leg out to the side and in. So we're going to go slowly first, going out side to side. And this movement kind of reminds you perhaps of walking, right? So the pelvic floor is in, um, naturally involved in walking, in stabilizing our movement. And in, sway one leg to the side and center. And go only as far as you can while maintaining the pelvis still. So your range of motion is your range of motion. It might be smaller, it might be bigger than mine. Work with what you've got, and let's go one more each way. And last side. Center, bring the hands side by side for shoulder bridge, for shoulder bridge prep. With here, we're gonna keep our legs hip distance apart, heels are nearby your knees. And take a deep breath in, breathing in through the nose. As you exhale, peel yourself up bone by bone all the way at the top. From your shoulders to your knees, your straight line holding it here. Take a full breath, inhaling in through the nose. And as you exhale, roll the spine down bone by bone. Take your time, there's no rush. All the way down. Doesn't that feel so good? And then pelvis comes back into neutral. So just let the pelvic floor, let the pelvis and the hip flexors completely relax first before we go back up. So take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, peel yourself up bone by bone, bone segmentally all the way back up. Keep the neck reaching long. Feet are lengthening away. Anchor your feet, anchor your hands, and roll the spine down. As you roll down, press the ribs down towards the ground and up towards the heart to really work on that mobility and opening up that mid-back area. And then pelvis back into neutral. Breathe here, relax the pelvis, don't hold on to anything, just let it all release. So a good pelvic floor help is when we can naturally with ease contract and relax our muscles there, right? All right, going back up, take a full breath in. And as you exhale, peel up bone by bone, all the way back up, shoulder blades gliding down your back, collarbone broad and wide, eyes up to the sky, and roll down, massaging the back, vertebra by vertebra, releasing any tension. Breathe through there, and then pelvis back into neutral. Now we're gonna change it up a little bit. Go up piece by piece, articulating the spine up. Hold here, now you're gonna stay here and sway or glide, slide the hips side to side. So from here, go towards your right. You're gonna to try to keep your feet there as much as you can and your legs there, your legs will slightly move and bring it to your middle and sway to the other side. Keep reaching your arms long down by your side Mindful we're not holding on to the neck or the face as we sway. Side to center and side. Now these automatically 
get the supporting muscles of the pelvic floor as well, like the multifidus that is along your spine, those muscles. Those are the stabilizer muscles that are important. They're tiny, but they're very important. And center, let's go one more each way side to center. Keep reaching your knees straight forward and center. And you're gonna lower the pelvis down an inch and we're gonna do it right here. So you can make the height different as well too. If you need to go lower, you can do that as well. Protect that back. We're just sliding side to side. Keep your kneecaps reaching forward. Mine wanna shift with my pelvis, but I wanna work on not shifting them. And center. The abdominals naturally fire, so I don't want you to think about over-recruiting. For example, when we're walking or lifting, we're not overthinking of over-recruiting the muscles, right? We wanna be able to naturally, automatically be able to do these movements without overthinking it. Let's go one more each way. Last side, center and roll the spine down, vertebra by vertebra, and pelvis back into neutral. Great job, friends. Let's turn over sideways to face me and stack your body against the back edge of the mat and rest your head on your hand. You can also be all the way down with the hands straight. Swing the legs forward into diagonal from your hips to the top of the head, your straight line. Bring that top leg up hip height for side kick front and back. Flex the foot forward and point the toes back. So you're flexing as you reach forward and lengthen the whole feet. So you're pointing with the whole foot, kick forward and reach back. Lengthen, reach forward and reach back. Imagine I'm pulling your leg away from the hip socket, creating length, working on that strength and mobility. Keep your upper body still. Imagine you're pushing it against the back wall behind you. Lift and forward and back. Lengthen, reach out. Head is reaching long and away from the shoulders and back. Swing, reach forward and lengthen back. Keeping your hips stacked as the leg moves in the hip socket. Last two, last one and back. Four, up and down. Turn that top leg up internally and point the heel up towards the ceiling, toes downward. Flex that foot as you go up and down. Small range of motion, but very effective. Around, up and down. Lift and lower, up and down. Press that bottom leg down to help you stabilize, up and down. Trying to maintain the hip stack, the shoulder stack, keeping the chest open. Keep reaching the heel away from the hips as you go up and down, maintaining that beautiful posture you got. Up and down, you got this. Lift and lower. Up and down. Last two. Last one, hold. Keep the internal rotation for leg circles. So circling back behind you, small circles, moving in the hip socket as you maintain the trunk still. These internal rotation movement are so important because oftentimes we lose that internal rotation connection because of our lifestyle now, we're very sedentary these days. And to have that range of motion and ability is important for our pelvic floor as well too. Around and up, you're doing amazing. Last three, two, one, and reverse, going the other way. Around and in, making sure the whole leg is moving, not just the, the foot on the top, right? Around and in, and you can look if you need to. Otherwise, you can just keep smiling and looking at me as you build that strength, improve your health, and round and up. Starting to feel the burn, I don't know about you. Last three, two, and one. Well done, lower that leg down. And come up to seated, and let's swing the leg over to the other side. Straighten the leg up and away. Head is resting on the hand, swing the leg forward. Create that long lengthened posture, bring that top leg up for front and back. You can also bend your bottom knee in for more support if you need there. Kick forward and reach back. Lengthen forward and back. And you might find that one side is different than the other and that's perfectly fine. And kick forward, reaching back. Breathe in and breathe out. Use the help, breath 
to help you move and stabilize. Inhaling and exhaling at your own pace. Neck is long, shoulders relax. Swing forward and point back. Doing our best to keep the upper body still as you press that bottom leg down for stabilization. Last two, last one, and back. Turn that top leg downward, so internally rotating the whole leg in the hip socket, making sure the hips are still stacked. From here, point that heel up, toes down and flex the foot on top, and you go up and down. Lift and lower. Up and down, you can place the hand on top of the hips to help you remember to keep it stacked as the leg moves. That's another way of keeping it stable. Up and down. Breathe up and down. Lift and lower. Keep lengthening the leg away from the hip socket. Keeping that shoulder stacked, hip stacked, maintaining that box on the upper body. Up and down. Last two. Last one, circle, circle forward, around and up, small circle. So your range of motion might be smaller or bigger. This is what works for me. As I try to keep the hips still, around and in, around and in, around and up. Breathe, and the pelvic floor naturally engages as you go through this movement. Last two, last one. Reverse, going back, around and in. Keep the neck long, I was starting to lower my chin. Around and in, breathe and lengthen. Round and up, right on top of each other, small beautiful circles right on top of each other. You're almost there, last one. And lower the leg down, bend the knees. Turn over onto your hands and knees into a kneeling position from here. The hands are right underneath the shoulders and knees right underneath the hip socket. Press the palms and the fingertips down onto the ground, anchoring and spine is long in length and eyes looking down on the mat. Going into alternating arms and leg movement. So for me, we're gonna start with just the right leg going up. So find your balance point. Set the shoulders down your back. The leg is reaching away, keeping the pelvis still. Lift and lower the leg. Up and down. Now if you have pretty good control here, add the opposite arm movement going up and down at the same time. So find that balance point as you lift the other arm up, going up and down. Lift and lower. It's like walking, right? Or reaching for things in the cabinet. Functional movement while keeping your torso still, going up and down. Neck is long. Lengthen, reach up. Breathe. Last two, last one. Lower the hand right underneath the shoulder. Knee comes back. Realign your spine and bring the other leg out. Keep reaching the leg out. Floor find that balance point and lift and lower the leg. Breathe here. Keeping everything still as much as you can, just moving the leg. Now if you're ready, you can add the arm movement. Opposite arm from the leg going up and down. Lift and lower, up and down. This is like swimming, our typical swimming on the mat. So we have elevated it and up and down. Lift and lower, keep your neck relaxed. The gut, eyes are just looking straight down to protect the neck. You're doing amazing. Last two, last one. Bring your hand and your knee back to center. Sit back on your heel, cross your leg, and swing the legs forward. Scoot over towards the front. We're gonna roll down onto the ground and roll down knees bent or arms here to help you assist and roll all the way down. From here, we're gonna go into supine spine twist. Bring the legs together, hands rest side by side for knee spread. Bring the legs apart, and then together. Inhale, open the legs apart, moving in the hip sockets, and exhale to come in. 
Inhale, open, and legs naturally open out in the sockets, and then exhale to come in. Now we're gonna pick up the pace a little bit faster, find the rhythm that works for you. So we're going a little faster because in walking and doing everyday activity, we tend to move a little faster, right? So our range of motion might be smaller than it was when it was going slower, but find a rhythm that works for you while you're trying to maintain your pelvis still as much as you can. Let's do two more. Last one, well done. Bring the hands up to the side, making a letter T and palm up towards the ceiling. Just check your hands side by side to make sure they're right where you want them to be. From here, sway both knees to one side for knee sway. So the knees sway to one side, the ribs stretch across, eyes up towards the sky, and exhale to bring it back together as you press the ribs down to return. Inhale, go to the other side, reaching across, feeling that lengthening and opening all the way from low back, middle back, and upper back through the ribs and the spine, and exhale to bring it back to your center. Use the breath to help you. Inhale, reach across, keep your collarbone wide, face relaxed, neck is soft, and exhale to bring it back to your center, swaying side to side, opening across. You don't have to look exactly like me, so your range of motion might be bigger or smaller. Find a version that works for you today, and opening across, stretching through the ribs, eyes to the sky, back of the palm gently anchoring onto the ground, reaching across. The health of your pelvic floor muscles are all connected through the ribs and the spine. So, so important that we do exercises like this to keep us healthy, functioning well, and exhale to your center. One more this side, twist and reach across. And this movement just feels so good on your body too. And bring it back to your center. Rest your hands, keep them where they are. If you need to adjust, if they're uncomfortable on your shoulders, you can bring them a little lower as well too. Going into our supine spine twist, bring your right leg into tabletop and left leg into tabletop. Press those inner thighs together. The shins are parallel to the floor and the kneecaps are right on top of the pelvis. Sway the legs towards me. Keep those kneecaps side by side as you inhale to reach across and exhale to bring it back to your center. Now, if this is too much for your back or your body, you can go back to the previous version. It's perfectly fine. And sway the other way as you inhale across and exhale to bring the ribs back right to the middle. Inhale, breathing in to move and exhale back to your center. So these movements are also so great for your posture. If you spend a lot of time seated in front of a computer or in front of a smartphone, or if you have a baby and you're breastfeeding, these muscles and bones get stiff and tight often, these joints, right? So this is a really good exercise also to do for your posture. Just open up tight areas of the body as well. I love these exercises. And reach across with control and flow. One more. And back to your center. Well done. We're kicking it up a notch. So straighten both legs up towards the ceiling. If you're not able to keep your legs straight, you can also bend your knees. So find a version. You can also go back into that tabletop position we did. You're going to straighten the legs up if you can here. Anchor the back of your scapula onto the ground. Plug the legs into the hip socket here and sway the legs to one side. And exhale to pull it back in. Inhale, reach across. The pelvic floor descends. Exhale, and the pelvic floor returns and rests to a natural state. And you really don't have to think too much about it. I just wanted to give you a little idea of what's happening with your body. Not something we think about often, right? As we breathe in and out. And center. You're doing amazing. Go 
at your own pace, your own range of motion that works for you today. Celebrate what your body can do. And center, exhale. <clears throat> and inhale. One more. Exhale. And inhale. Bend the knees, hug your knees in, give yourself a good hug. And rock up to seated. Come up to standing. You can come st straight up, use your hands, or use a lunge position to come up. I'm going to press down, use my hands to lift myself back up. We're going to go into some standing work here with your legs hip distance or wide as the shoulder. So find a version that feels comfortable on your knees here. From here, we're going to hinge forward. So the spine slightly hinges forward and the arms reach back. So the arms are pointed up, the palm is pointed up, above the pelvis, and as you come up, the legs straighten, the arms come forward. And as you lower, arms reach back, and as you straighten, arms reach forward. So these movements, you'll notice, are movements that we do when we need to sit and get up from our chair, from the bathroom, or to carry and lift things up, like lift a baby, lift groceries, things off the ground, pick up toys, and your pelvic floor helps with that movement. Dart back, so head in line with your spine. You can make this range of motion smaller, less bending of the knees if you need to, depending on what feels good on your body, perhaps your knees or your back. And up, hinging back into that dart position and coming right back up. Hinge back and up. We're going smooth and soft here so we get the proper alignment, the best benefit we can get from this movement. And lengthening through the tailbone, through top of the head, like you're about to sit on a chair, and you get right back up. You're building strength, you're improving functional health of your body. You're doing amazing and feeling a little heat along the way, right? And up. Now this time we're going to stay here. You can adjust your foot position, hip distance, or wide as the shoulders. We're going to go into arms forward. So we're going into a squat again, but a different version. You're just going to bend your knees slightly and slide down. So rather than a hinge, it's a slide down. Your body will naturally hinge slightly a little forward, but not much as of a hinge forward as we did earlier. Open the arms out to the side, opening the chest. Inhale, open. Exhale to lift. Inhale. And exhale. And the pelvic floor naturally contracts and relaxes as we go through these movements. And up. Open. Press those feet down. Adjust if you need to. And up. Lengthen through the top of the head, open, and in. Last three, two, last one. Stand up straight, lower your hands down, turn around to face me, stand tall, Heels right underneath the hip socket. Relax the shoulder blades down your back. And close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And full breath out, relaxing the shoulders. Full breath in. And exhale, 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 letting go. Not holding on to anything. And just take a moment to scan your body from the top of the head, through the face and the shoulders the back and the stomach and notice if there's something different. Notice if you feel a little better, perhaps a bit more of energy, more opening all the way down through the pelvis, the thighs, the calves and the feet all the way down. Just take this moment to notice how good it feels to take time out for yourself. 
Take another deep breath in and full breath out and open your eyes. Congratulations, you did it. You completed Pilates for pelvic floor. Keep this great progress you've got going and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for joining me today. If you like this video and want to see more classes like this, like this video, subscribe to this channel and tap that notification bell and let me know how today's class went for you in the comment section below. See you soon again.